Hey guys, I'm here in uh, lovely Raleigh, North Carolina, trying to uh, get the heck out of the state before a hurricane hits. But first, we're going to do a little bit of pressure pulse testing. So I've got a uh, Chevy Colorado rental car that has become my guinea pig for testing this week. And we are going to compare the operation of the first look sensor and our homemade sensor on a couple of different tests. Before we show you results of our testing, let's talk a little bit about what type of test we can do with this tool. Pressure pulse testing, whether it's with the first look sensor or our homemade sensor, does not measure exhaust back pressure. It does not measure intake vacuum. These guys simply react to a change in pressure. Hook this guy up to your scope, put the other end in the intake or exhaust or crankcase, and anytime there is a change in pressure, you will see a change in the signal on our scope. A properly running engine has some predictable pressure changes. In the exhaust, every single time a cylinder fires and gases expand to push the piston down, when that cylinder reaches its exhaust stroke and the exhaust valve opens, that pressure is pushed out the exhaust. We can see that push, that change in pressure in the exhaust using a pressure pulse sensor. If every cylinder is firing properly, there are no valve issues, then all of our pressure pulses in the exhaust should be fairly the same. In the intake, every pull of the intake stroke should show up as the same drop in pressure. Again, if the cylinder doesn't have any sealing, breathing, or valve train issues, all of the pressure pulses or drops should be the same. So this type of testing is simply a game of which one of these does not look like the other. Connect this guy to your scope, connect this guy to your intake, start the engine. If all of the pressure pulses look the same, then every single cylinder is providing the same pull every time it reaches the intake stroke. If all of the pressure pulses look the same hooked up to the crankcase, to the dipstick tube, then the blow-by for every single cylinder is the same. Uh, the tough part is when one pulse looks different from all the rest. At that point, we got a little work to do. Uh, we need to hook up a second channel. We need a sync probe connected to one of our ignition coils or a uh, firing event for one of the cylinders. And we need to make sense of what and when our anomaly, our difference in our pressure pulse is happening. That's a subject for another video, or even better, training. One of the missions of Train by Techs is to get you guys to go to training. I don't care who it is, I don't care where it's being held, if you can get to it, we want you to physically go to training. Now, of course, I work for CTI, so I am going to recommend CarQuest Technical Institute classes, but there's a ton of great instructors across the country that cover this very tool, or tools just like it, and techniques uh, using it. So go to training if you can. All of our testing, except for one screen, uh, was done on known good cars. It's the best way to get familiar with any diagnostic tool. Do not try to learn how to use any piece of equipment on a broken car. Get good at acquiring signals on known good cars first. So most of our examples are going to be rental cars, my own personal cars, whatever cars the shops had that I was in that week. So let's get back to showing you these tools in action. Our first test, intake manifold of our Chevy Colorado. Pull the vacuum line off, hooked up our homemade sensor, hooked up our first look sensor, uh, set up our time base, set up our voltage, and uh, collected some signals. Hope you enjoy. So the waveforms in the intake between the two tools look a little bit different, but both of them are representing even changes in pressure. There is no problem inside of this intake manifold. With each tool connected to the dipstick tube, we are looking at, again, different waveforms, but even changes, even pressure pulses indicating that we do not have a cylinder with excessive blow-by inside of the crankcase.
we uh, did give it a try, put the first look and the homemade sensor in the tailpipe of a Honda four cylinder. And again, we're looking at nice, even pressure pulses. The uh, exhaust pulse from every single cylinder is the same. We don't have a misfire. We don't have a valve timing issue. This car is a known good. It's running properly. So let's take a look at our one bad waveform. I hooked up the homemade pressure pulse sensor to the intake manifold of a Honda V6. And you can notice right in the middle here, there's a difference in the signal. There's an anomaly. There's a change in pressure that isn't like the others. And I thought at first this was just a weird thing with the homemade sensor. But when I hooked up the first look, the pattern was exactly the same. So what do we have here? I'm not sure. We're not going to analyze it. I, again, I think that's a subject for another class or some training classes. But what can we do to determine when this is happening? Well, let's zoom in. Notice I've got a sync probe. The red channel is when cylinder number one is triggered or fired and then fired again. In between those two mo moments in time, all the other cylinders are firing. So let's bring up some rulers. Put one cursor on the first firing event, second cursor. And now we've got 720 degrees of crankshaft rotation. Takes two turns of the crankshaft to go through the four stroke cycle. Let's bring up our rulers. And since this is a six cylinder engine, put six rulers up. Here's where cylinder number one fires, then the next cylinder in the firing order, and the next, and the next, until we get to cylinder number one again. There are overlay programs out there that can give you exact piston location, what stroke what piston is on. Uh, I believe one is available for free if you have Windows 10. If you don't have Windows 10, uh, the drivability guys and some other resources out there will provide you with piston location charts. Or we can use a little bit of math and uh, figure out how many degrees after whatever cylinder in the firing order this anomaly is happening. Either way, what we see is a difference in pressure. And that is what we would focus on with this problem waveform. Okay, so one last thing, guys. I mention it all the time in my classes. When we talk about doing this type of testing, there is an investment involved. It would be great if we could all run out and buy the super amazing Pico Master Kit, but slowly build your test equipment. That's part of the reason why we're giving these homemade sensors away so that you see the value in it and you realize, oh, it's worthwhile calling AES Wave and ordering a first look or a WPS or any type of advanced testing equipment. If you don't have the money for that, well, start small. That Vantage right there, that's what made me realize the value of this type of testing. Yes, I can't believe it still works. Uh, the U-Scope right now is hooked up to our homemade sensor. Our homemade sensor is in the intake. I hope I can get this on the screen at the same time, but... There's our pulses, or our pulls, all even, all the same. Looks pretty close to what I recorded with the exact same tool on our Honda. So there are inexpensive ways of getting into this type of testing. You will realize the value of it, and you will quickly realize that you need to step up your diagnostics game and equipment and move on to more cool stuff. But gotta start somewhere.